Hello and welcome back to the Folklore Hiking Stick Workshop. I've got um, a few hiking sticks going through the workshop at the minute, three custom ones, and I've got two which I'm going to put a handle grip on or a grip on top of the handle, whichever way around you want to address that. But I thought I'd show you how I go about it and how you can do that without the aid of power tools of any description as you know i don't use a dremel i don't have a dremel but i overcome that by using uh, other methods which you will see not the correct methods shall i su suggest but um for safety and that but in any way i get the job done but uh, you can do it with just ordinary tools and um i've got kind of like three hand grip styles i do and um, I'll take you through those. But um, yeah, let's crack on and have a quick little look at hiking stick handles. So right then, um, this is a hiking stick I've actually got online to sell at the minute. But you can see I've got a hand grip at the top. And as you can see, it's just a straightforward, basically uh, carved groove all the way around the shaft and i've got four of them i do up to seven if i'm doing a bushwhacker model because it's a heavier gauge piece of wood and you're using it to strike undergrowth and um, vegetation out the way i put seven grip holds on it because you kind of need it but this kind of works as it is but as you can see i've also done a twirl down through the shaft but that that is the same method as how I've done this. But um, I'm going to show you how you can achieve that with just some hand tools. You don't need power tools. It's relatively straightforward. And to be honest with you, you can possibly um, achieve a greater degree of success as a beginner and learner with hand tools rather than using power tools. Because quite simply, a power tool is moving faster and removes a lot more wood any errors become magnified and not only that you can actually ruin a good piece of uh, crafting wood or hiking stick that you're making by a simple slip or an error whereas if you're doing it with hand tools because things are a lot slower the chances become extremely more um, you know less and uh, minimal but um, yeah I'll just let you have a quick little look this is going to be a rabbit stick, so don't worry, it's not for a uh, miniaturised person, this hiking stick. Yeah, it's going to be a rabbit stick. But I've actually got a a twirl hand grip on it, If it, as you can see. It's quite tight, it doesn't have to be that tight, but because of the length of the piece of wood, I've kept it tight. So, you know, when I throw it, obviously, um, I don't have the hand grip it's you know going too far up shaft but in any case you can see a nice twirl there running along but i'll take you through i do have a checkered diamond uh, pattern i do as well um, i've only done that on about four or five sticks but um, i aim to do one of mine that i've got here to do in a moment which you will you which you will see um, and see me doing it but this and the actual straight one are my most common hand grips I do. In fact, they appear, if I'm doing a hand grip, these are the two you're more likely to see. Um, getting on the subject of uh, hand grips, well, I kind of think of it like if it's a 75-25 split, 75% of people do not even like hand grips. Um, they don't see the point. They don't like the feel. They like to be able to feel the hand run up and down the shaft while they're moving without any undue um, friction or interference with the hand grip. But other people, um, like you said, that 25% do like that solid connection. And because your hand and skin and all the actual um, components of your hand lock into those grips it really does provide a good solid grip the downside is that if you're moving around on the, the actual shaft you can feel it and it, it it interrupts the actual smooth flow of using the hiking stick if you're moving your hand up and down 
but as for you know the purpose of it being a grip it's a fantastic um it's a fantastic addition to your hiking stick but like i said ironically 75 percent of people don't like the thought or don't like using one with a hand grip so this is all i'm going to use to create a hand grip with just ordinary hand tools nothing exciting nothing extravagant in fact you could create those um, hand grips with just a pocket knife that has a saw blade and a knife in it these items just aid it an old chainsaw um, sharpening a file a hedge cutter and just an ordinary saw and in fact you could just do away with both of those and just use one sandpaper obviously to clean the groove up afterwards a marker pen to mark the swirl or the lines or just using tape to go around so you can follow one side of the tape to get a uniformed finish but as you can see it's a pretty basic amount of tools and in fact i should imagine most people have got some of this most people would have one of these anyway so it requires no no uh, financial outlay to make this uh, hand grip or hand grips on hiking sticks so i've got a piece of scrap wood here as you can see the chainsaw went through it so it's none in void so i've just got a marker pen and let's say i just want to do a, a groove and i'm just marking it as you can see so i've just basically got something to follow like that or alternatively if i was doing a spiral it would simply be i would do a spiral with the pen right the way around like this keeping an eye so i gain some sort of uniformity and as you can see that i would follow that but the masking tape method is quite simply put it around follow it around marry it up I would cut along that line there the top line just following the masking tape and if I wanted to do a spiral with the masking tape I would place it on the wood at a bit of an angle and I would go up the wood denoting the angle or the shape of the spiral that I wanted and I would cut along that outward line and just completely follow it all the way up through but you can open or close the tightness of the spiral depending on how you um, maneuver your masking tape or your line that you've drawn so i'll remove this a minute right then let's get to it so basically this line here what am i going to do I'm just going to cut into it and follow it around, cutting. It's quite hard when you haven't got a, a vice or a workbench. And, and you don't need to go too deep. I'm just going round following the line. All the way around. And you can see I've cut a, a rough line there. I haven't gone too deep. If I get the chainsaw file, I can now follow that line going all the way around. And that basically gives it a uniform finish. And not only that, 
it cleans it up to help with the sanding process afterwards. The reason I'm using a chainsaw file is it's not too aggressive. If you're using a woodworking one, it might just take too much wood out at the moment. And just keep going around. So I'm not going to continue uh, keep filing because um, obviously it's time and I've got to crack on. But you get the gist of it. Basically, you just keep going around to you create the, the trench and get down to the saw mark that you've made. So you remove the saw mark. That's why you don't want to go too deep on the initial uh, cut there. Just get your sandpaper and it's as simple as just taking a piece off and then... Just folding it over so you've got a nice rounded bit there, putting it in the trench and just basically going through the whole trench and sanding it out. And keep going around and around and around. And if you keep going, Obviously, like I said, with the file, you want to take out that saw trench. I'm just not, uh, you know, wasting my time doing it at the moment because I've got to get on to my actual main projects. But there you go. You've got a basic, uh, a carved first ring of a hand grip there. And if you were doing these, all you do is, like I said, just with the saw, just keep following it and following it. And then do the same with a... Uh, chainsaw file but just for the purposes of demonstration let me find it um, you will have on a pocket knife or you should have somewhere on here a saw blade and I'm going to find that saw blade uh, I won't let you watch me while I take every blade open Well, I've just spent five minutes looking around this here to try and find this blade. So uh, <laughs> I finally found it. So if you've just got this, um, a well, this here is a Swiss Army knife, um, uh, the camping model. Obviously, it comes with a very small saw. And basically, like I said, you don't need any, any real tools. You can just do this with a... Uh, pocket knife it's that it's that simple just get the saw biting in you can tell I haven't used this one very much this is my I bought this as a treat to myself but yeah I'm just following the actual line that I uh, put on the piece of wood and I'm just following it. Obviously, if you're crafting one hiking stick, you can take as long and be as precise as you want to be. Um, obviously, I'm in a little bit of a hurry because I've got other things I want to get on with today. But I'm just showing you that you can carve a hand grip or a swirl with just a uh, humble pocket knife. You don't need no expensive power tools like Dremels, uh, cutting equipment and everything like that. All it requires is time and patience if you're doing it this way. So you'll see basically what I've done with the pocket knife. I've cut a part of the twirl. Yet again, just an old chainsaw file and I'm just following it along the groove. Now this does require a bit of effort because it's not removing huge amounts of wood. But it is doing the job and like I said, you don't need to invest in loads and loads of um, woodworking tools. So 
so like I said you can see I've got the beginnings of a twirl there and you would obviously keep filing until you got down to the cut mark you made with the saw. So, like I was saying, um, the less aggressive you are with the saw, the less work or as deep as you've got to go with the file. Yet again, once you've finished uh, that with the chainsaw file, you don't even need a chainsaw file. If you've got time and patience, sandpaper will do it if you fold it over so you create that rounded edge piece. You can actually do it with just that on its own. But it just requires, like I said, if you're crafting, the half of the pleasure of it, you know, if you've got the time, is just doing things like this by hand and whiling away the time, you know, in your own thoughts doing it. But um, obviously I've got, you know, multiple uh, sticks to do at a time. So I don't really have the, the option to do it by this method. But I'm just demonstrating you can do it on the extreme um, opposite end of people with power tools and with expensive woodworking equipment. You can do carving, putting hand grips or twirls quite simply with basic tools. And uh, yeah, just basically run your sandpaper in the channel and keep going. So you get a nice smooth, um, basically, um, channel, which you've carved out. And then obviously run it down through like that. This is extremely rough. I'm just showing you the process and you can see that it does actually work. And you could do that to your own hiking sticks. And, um, you know, with just a pocket knife and a piece of sandpaper if you so wish so you can see here i'm using tape to make the swirl and i'm going to actually cut following the lines of the masking tape here you can see i've used a marker pen to do the outlines of the diamond shapes i'm going to cut to form the hand grip on this one I'll be using a grinder which is not the correct tool and not the correct disc don't follow my lead get a dremel or a proper carving tool um, don't follow what I'm doing this is just what how I do it and obviously dust mask um, ear protection eye protection I usually use a um, sanding uh, shield which I put over the top of this one when i'm actually sanding i've constructed that just recently but i'm good because i'm filming um i won't do it on this occasion
So there, there's the two uh, hand grips that I've uh, carved into these hiking sticks. As you can see, I've got the diamond one there. And I've got the swirl one there with a couple uh, end caps on the bottom here. And um, it hasn't come out too bad, I don't think. I say you can see what they are. So, yeah, I'm very happy with those. And as you can see, you can do them, you know, quite easily. But um, I have sanded them and they're ready now for wood burning. So as you can see, if you have a stripped stick, it obviously becomes more visible. But um, I think you can agree it's come out not too bad. And I'm quite pleased with the results. Like I said, they're all sanded back. They're ready now for wood burning. And then I'll put the finishing coats. Some of them have actually got to be a varnish. And some will be an oiled finish. So yeah, I'm moving on to that part of the production now. I just thought it would be interesting for you to see that. But remember, if you're doing anything like what I'm doing here, get the proper engraving and carving tools to do it. I'm improvising with the grinder. I shouldn't be doing it. It's a strict no-no. And um, I will honestly say that is an unsafe practice. So don't follow my lead. Get the proper tools. But if you're starting out, I think you can agree also that uh, just a... Just a humble pocket knife and a file and a bit of sandpaper, you can you can achieve the same results, but it will obviously take you a lot longer. For me, because I'm doing a um, quantity of hiking sticks, I need to speed the process up. I will be getting a Dremel at some point. I'm actually looking at it at this moment uh, or a rotary kind of um, carving tool that uh, I can utilize in the workshop. So yeah, um, I hope you've enjoyed coming with me on this little um, uh, excursion into engraving handles for hiking sticks. The sky's your limit really on what you what type of engraving you want to do. You could engrave, you know, fine artwork of animals and plants, you know, classical pieces of art if you were really that so inclined and that skilled but these are just cheap hiking sticks that i've just put handles on and they will serve the purpose so uh, yeah i hope you enjoyed that and thanks for coming along this is andy from the folklore hiking stick workshop take care stay safe and hope to catch you guys out on the trail